Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about our Robin Mead inspired landscapes. There are three major components to a landscape. So the midground or the middle ground is a obviously the middle of the landscape. The foreground is the area that's the closest to the viewer and the background is the area that is way back in the back of the artwork. So things like sky, moon, clouds, things like that. So for this project I'm providing you with several examples, uh, visual examples of Robin Means artwork. You can take a look at it for inspiration, combine several of the elements, and also and of course make it your own. You're just taking a bit of inspiration from the artwork that she creates and creating your own interpretation of a landscape. So the first thing that I would like for you to draw is the background. Uh, the background can consist of many different things, but there will be a horizon line, usually some sort of a mountainside, and there's usually a sky. So they could be, um, you could have it be the sun or moon or both, or maybe your landscape will consist of um, an extraterrestrial planet. It's totally up to you. For this particular thing, for this particular artwork, I chose to do a landscape and mountainside landscape with trees in front of it. I also decided to do the sun. So with the trees I focused as the middle ground and I made like little cloud shapes and of course the ground that the trees are resting on as the middle ground area. For the foreground, I decided to make it an ocean or waves, and so I decided to do these spiral waves, which are really fun and create a lot of movement within your artwork. But you can also create whatever sort of foreground you like, whatever you find interesting. So once you have added all the details that you wanted to include in your landscape with pencil, we're going to add color with the use of watercolor. Remember to activate the watercolor paint, you have to add water to it by using your brush. We will be doing the dry method, meaning that the paper is completely dry, there's no water on top of the paper, so we're going to be starting out with the dry method, painting straight with paint. So what I suggest to do is start painting in sections. So wherever, let's say you want to include yellow, start painting that first. So here I started with the sun, and I knew that I wanted some of my sun rays to be yellow. So I painted that first. If you start to paint different colors together like I'm about to do, it'll end up being muddled, meaning that the colors start to mix together. And we're trying to keep them separated so we can add several layers of color. So, so what I suggest to do is making sure that you color in sections. So The cool thing about watercolors is once you add your first layers and they dry, you can add another layer on top of that same color or another color or a mixed color to make it more vibrant and brighter. I'm going to insert some footage of me painting at home doing that very same thing. So here you see me also using the palette to mix colors. So if you wanted to mix a like different color, you could use the palette itself that's on the watercolor set to mix them together or even you could use like a plate or a styrofoam plate, a plastic plate to mix them together. And here you just saw me adding some more layers. So once you add layers they make um, a lot more brighter colors. And especially when it dries you can go back and add a layer of a lighter color to make it more yellow or you can go back to the blues to make it more more of an interesting blue, more of an intense blue. So it's completely up to you but that's the fun part of using um, watercolors. So 
So once you completely finish painting, this is the part where you're going to use markers. I would like for you to use a black Sharpie marker or a black marker and add lines. You're going to be outlining everything that you drew from your original drawing with pencil and you're outlining everything. I would also like for you to include a variety of lines, meaning thick lines, thin lines, mixed into the artwork wherever you see fit to make it look more interesting. If you go back and view some of Robin Mead's artwork, you notice that her artwork does this and it makes it look more bold so the colors look a lot brighter. And to finish out our Robin Mead inspired landscapes, we're going to rely on our Zentangle knowledge and we're going to be adding patterns within our artwork. It doesn't have to be all of it, it could just be some sections or whatever section you feel like. The um, Zentangles could be in light colored areas or you can do the patterns with a black marker, it's completely up to you.